Hello! And welcome to Dobbs Quest, Season 2, Episode 3. Uh, joining me tonight, as always, we have, uh, playing the part of Serene, Elvin Bard, Daysnick. Hola, como esta? As Glane, the sneaky thief type. GameCube. I'm taking a break from Pokemon to be here today. <laughs> Good Yugaba. And as a Torgan Brave Warrior, we have Lurking Turtle Gaming. Am I excited for Dobbs Quest tonight? As the kids would say, bet. Well. Ooh. How, uh, so, uh, boy, that really derailed my train of thought. All right, so last time, uh, you guys had, uh, dealt with the issue of one of the, uh, one of the settlements on the borderlands of the Ironlands, uh, at the settlement of Bulwark. Uh, was basically gearing for a territorial war with a territorial group of wolf-like creatures known as the Varro. Uh, also, perhaps saved a child. Yes, exactly. Uh, there was no throwing involved, thankfully. Uh... And you were able to get out without really uh, entering into any combat, which was actually very nice uh, for you all, since health is of a concern uh, on your on your trope on your travels. The uh, the big ending of our last episode was that the uh, the mystic you are traveling with, uh, Lucia. Uh, told you that it was necessary that you leave right away. Uh, now, you didn't really get much information as to uh, what exactly was going on there. 11, 12. And we don't actually know what kind of mystic uh, Lucia is. We don't know what kind of abilities she has or what kind of... Uh, um, rituals she is able to perform. Uh, so, I figure one thing we can do here is basically just roll randomly against the list of all ritual assets. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There are 17 built-in assets. The mystical kind. Yes, a mystical mystic. Uh, you know what? It, it might be fortitude. Uh, I'm gonna roll a 17-sided die. Don't ask how that's gonna happen. Uh, and we're gonna determine what kind of mystical ritual Lucia is able to perform. Uh, typically in the Iron Sworn setting, uh, rituals are not these flashy magic spells. They are, they are a slow careful process um think less fireball and more circle of salt warding kind of thing the boar is still on the enemy tracker the boar remembers the boar does not forgive i will move i will remove the boar but he's still out there watching waiting remaining an active threat. All right, 17-sided die. Uh, a 16, which is Ward. Uh, when you walk... Oh, what? This is the exact thing I was talking about. That doesn't seem super fair. Uh, and it doesn't seem super story relevant. Uh, able to ward against foes. And let's get one more. Other than a, other than a 16. 
I would ask what the chances of that happening are. All right. Maybe, well, since she's from the Ashen Lands, maybe she has to ward her village against certain things. Yeah. Like the, 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 the plague of the Ashen Lands encroaching on her village or some such. And we also have uh, divination. Um, this is a sort of magical way to gather information. Uh, we don't know the details, but so she has some sort of uh, second sight, uh, which allows her to discern information, uh, see things that others cannot. Uh, so presumably she has had some kind of vision. Uh, uh, let's see here. Where are the oracles? I really should have added those uh, to the bot itself at some point, but whatever. Uh, we'll use the old-fashioned paper uh, paper rule book. Uh, we're going to figure out a little bit of information about, you know, what, what kind of vision did she have here uh, by rolling uh, a couple of D100s. And we're going to figure out kind of the nature of uh, what she has, what she has seen in her vision that has led her to basically tell you guys, we got to get out of here now. Uh, you guys, what had happened last episode is you guys wanted to use the sojourn move, which allows you to sort of recover health, momentum, spirit, the works, uh, as a way of kind of saying, Hey, we're, we're resting with this settlement for a while to recover and recuperate. Uh, but that move missed completely uh and we had to figure out why exactly uh okay 53 45 Ooh, and i can read this in either order here and i get different different items that both kind of apply uh 53 on action 45 on on theme reads begin danger uh, which does fit quite nicely. Uh, yeah, I think, sh you know what? I feel like that is about the limit to what she has discerned so far is that there is, there is trouble brewing, um, and you will be needed. Uh, now the exact nature of the divination ritual as written, uh, the default ability does not allow you to reveal information about the subject's future until you get kind of more skilled at it. Uh, so she may just be seeing things as they are now, but elsewhere. Uh, but either way, Lucia, Lucia comes to you as, as you're preparing to kind of tend to your wounds and um, perhaps make preparations for the journey ahead. And she says, no, we, we need to go now. There's, there's, there's danger on the horizon. Uh, we have to we have to sort of get there first. She doesn't know the details yet. Uh, but she at least knows it is we need to go or bad things are going to happen. That said, you guys aren't exactly on rails and could choose to remain here uh, and attempt to seek healing, that sort of thing. Um, it would probably be from the heal move rather than the uh, the uh, sojourn move. Um, but you had the opportunity uh, to continue to sort of try and get your health track back up. So Serene like looks looks at her as like, can you give us an hour to get ready? Um, and yeah, Lucia says she still needs to sort of uh, you know, ready the horses, um, uh, and grab what supplies she can, and then that's it. Okay, so we got an hour, um, to heal and maybe send Glane to like go pack us some lunches from that banquet they're throwing. Yeah. <laughs> maybe send Torgan to do that while I see my my pig bruise. 
I'll, yeah, I'm going to have to work with you on that, I guess. Because I'll have to do the heal check. Yes, which I'm sure will go great. Yeah, I rolled at a plus five. If it goes poorly, it's because the bot decided. I don't have dyslexia anymore, so you should be able to heal me. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you tried to heal me, it's because I had that disease. So yeah, the fish rot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's all it is. Um, so with your um uh, with your herbalist ability, you do get a pretty sizable bonus. Um, you have well, you have the option of taking the plus two, or you can have the ability to give an additional plus one health. Uh, heal by default is a uh, a plus two on a success, uh, which actually is all you need. Yeah, he only needs a plus two. That's good. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna go for the add plus two on the bonus, um, and hope for the best on that. Plus wits for a grand total of a five. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? All right, here we go. Heal check incoming. Turtle, please. Turtle? <laughs> Do we Turtle. need to put you in timeout? What? What? Turtle? Why? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my. That's I not... Guess. I went as whatever Serene does doesn't work, and I look at her and I say, you're not very good at this, are you? Serene slaps him. Oh my. Takes one damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is one of those things where... Alright, the, the obvious is it didn't work, but also uh, negative outcome does occur. Uh, I... Alright, so first of all, your arm injury. That was from season one. That's really been dealt with. Uh, you were you were bathed in the mana spring, and healed of your affliction of your fishlexia, as it's canonically called now. Uh, ooh, do we just want to roll on the on the big random table? Uh, you know, I can't help but think this is somehow my fault. All right, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say fifty fifty. Uh, even you take a damage. Your wound is worse. Uh, I think it should be because of the hit from Serene. He makes reacts negatively to the herb. And solstice. even its damage on its momentum. Momentum. Okay. This has basically just been a, a waste of time. Uh, Serene, you're the one that suffers that. Unfortunately, yeah, fine. Uh, you know, a, a little bit of loss of uh, some of your uh, some of your precious time and maybe a bit of morale. Uh, but overall, the wound is not worse, but it, it treating it, it proves more difficult than expected due to the rushed nature of things. Uh, you've also got you're also being kind of pestered by uh people from bulwark that are trying to uh you know you know we've got the feast coming on you you know we must we must select uh the, a fine seat for you come come and like uh, no we're uh you know what we'll catch up it's like i need a minute to you know bandage him up a bit to, uh, I'll, I'll get with you yeah so uh you're gonna be stuck at that low health for a little bit longer uh, Torgan, what were what were you working on for this last hour in town? I have been checking our supplies, uh, mm -hmm. uh, collecting some road snacks. Um, All right. Checking out the local horses. Of course. Seeing if they look suspicious or try to talk to them. <laughs> Torgan around. Just twerking around. That's what it is. All right. Uh, I was trying to think if there was some kind of uh, advantage you could secure in this situation uh, in preparing for the journey. Um, uh, you, you know, you know what, now, that, now that you mention it, mm -hmm. I, mention it uh, 
I did happen to um, chat up some people, and um, and uh, I got a good direction from a drunk man, you know, of, of what's which way we're going. Mm-hmm. So there's a chance that he was or was not correct, and I may need some information about uh, whether he was right or not. All right. Well, you're going to be kind of charming your way around, uh, hoping to get some extra information. Uh, so you're going to try and secure an advantage here with charisma, effectively, um, to see if you can glean a little bit of helpful advice for the journey ahead, uh, for the, at least for the first leg or two of it. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a friendly guy. Everybody wants yeah. to see me. Okay, and uh, you are able to uh, get a weak hit. That's plus one momentum. A short-lived advantage of some sort. Um, You're trying not to make a scene getting out of town. Uh, Lucia has has asked that, you know, we just kind of dip out without being really noticed. Let's just get out of here. We have to hurry. Uh, Really? A little quiet. Well, let's see what I can do about that. I like how he could have said he talked to anybody. Oh, I talked to the town map maker. I talked to the watchtower. I talked to I no. talked to a drunk. Yes. Well, I mean it, that that leaves room for interpretation by the dice. Crank up term. Was he correct? Thank you, Germ. Uh, all right. So he, you got a little bit of uh, you didn't get information, but um. Based on what Lucia was hoping for, basically just kind of a clean getaway here without a lot of hubbub, uh, you were able to kind of pull some convincing of uh, some of the some of the organizers of kind of like, uh, you know what, maybe maybe we'll come in like, a, you know, you know, maybe we won't be there at the beginning, you know, and uh, they, they kind of they, they insist, no, no, please, you must be there at the seat of honor right as the banquet begins. It's like, well, you know, I think I think that it would be better if we weren't. And you start laying out your case, you kind of, you know, talk about the uh, just the 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 process of a, of a real regal uh, event um, and ultimately convince them, like, you know what, maybe maybe we shouldn't be there at the start of it and you shouldn't be looking for us either. And they're like, oh, yes, of course. Great idea. Oh, I didn't I think of it. Uh, smooth talking your way. That, I'm going to pretend that it's a surprise party. So don't basically, basically. Um, now, the, uh, Lucia does have uh, a couple of contacts in the uh, settlement that she at least kind of does inform of their need to depart quickly. Uh, but really just hoping not to drag the, the whole settlement down with them in this uh, sort of dangerous situation that may be happening on the horizon. Uh, so at least you get a little bit of a cleaner escape. Uh, but with that and a failed healing attempt, uh, you guys are going to begin uh, setting out on your journey. I don't know why your bot hates it when I try to heal so much. You know, I'm this not. This isn't even the same bot. I know it's completely different. This keeps uh, up. We might have to here. come up with a story reason why this is not working. Yeah, seriously. Well, right now, like I haven't. Maybe I just haven't had time to get the right herbs, or you know, you were in those rose bushes. Maybe there's a local something in those in that rose stuff uh-huh. that uh, you know, rose thorns can can bear poison. So maybe there's just something that uh, you picked up in those rose bushes that I uh, didn't know about because I wasn't there. Yeah, you just weren't quite ready for that, so it wasn't. You know, it wasn't that it wasn't you as effective that as you healed been. poorly. It's just you didn't have all the information you needed at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to do this as an undertake a journey. Yeah, you uh, told me you danced with a boar. You just didn't, you forgot to mention the rose bush. Yeah, the details were kind of blurry there. I have rosacea. Is that what it is? Uh, so this particular journey is 
it is formidable. Uh, you guys are going to be crossing into the Ashen Lands during this journey. You are heading towards, uh, as far as you know, the only settlement within the Ashen Lands, Ember. Uh, this is a settlement that uh, is rich with mineral resources, uh, gems, raw metals, all uh, just the, the land is teeming with it. Uh, however, other than that, the land is pretty poor on resources, uh, food, lumber, all needing to be imported fairly regularly. Uh, Although the uh, the people of Ember have some ways to uh, stretch their provisions where needed, uh, more or less they they are fairly reliant on these uh, these outside caravans coming in, bringing resources and taking out the uh, mineral resources. So you guys are going to have a uh, a formidable journey ahead of you, which means 10 steps of progress to get a full track. Uh, we're going to figure out what kinds of things you find along the way. Uh, but first, uh, we need to make that initial rollout. Uh, now, for Undertaker Journey, it does not have to be unfamiliar, as in you don't know where you're going. Uh, but hazardous also applies. So because you are taking a journey across hazardous lands, uh, we are going to need to make a roll for each leg of the journey. Uh, at most, 10 progress before we will roll uh, the progress roll on that. Uh, but each of these are wits rolls, uh, which means probably Serene is going to be kind of in charge of things. Yeah, that's usually my. It's your yeah, that's your your shtick. Uh, along the way, coming with you will be Lucia, uh, George, uh, George, and a handful of other characters from the caravan that have been traveling with you to Bulwark. Some of those are staying here. Some of them are coming aboard the uh, the caravan. Uh, there is also, uh, we named one other character, Griff. Yeah, the one that doesn't like us. That does not like you. There's There's been some some butting of heads. Uh, Griff is a, uh, a staff fighter. Uh, but that's all we really know about Griff. Uh, everyone else is of vaguely neutral opinion with you. Um, so... Uh, we are going to begin with the Undertaker Journey initial roll. Uh, Serene will be making that attempt with wits. Uh, Torgan secured an advantage for the group, but that really only helps with momentum. Uh, Torgan, if you want to pass that momentum you gained to Serene, you may. I just realized I think I put the momentum on the wrong track, but now I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I want to pass it. I have seven. A... You keep it. You only have four. There you go. All right. I don't need it. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to make a roll of three for Serene. Don't miss. Three is good. Three is really good. It's not good enough. Seriously? What? I didn't even say it this time. Oh, yeah. I should well, I mean, probably... Let you guys see this live with the virtual camera so that you at least can have a little bit of a more oh, immediate. Yeah, I don't have to switch back and forth yeah, that would make things much easier, wouldn't it? You you'd think I'd remember to do that by now. <laughs> so uh uh a perilous event. Uh on the first leg of the journey, you guys are you guys are still in the forest around Bulwark. You have not gotten far for this first leg. Uh, I, oh, uh, yeah, I, I think we know what kind of dangers are in the area around here. Uh, is it our friend the boar, or is it well, uh, he did still, Varro from the other clan? I think some of the other clans of Varro have claimed the the areas around Bulwark. Uh, 
it has been well established that uh, these warring clans really seek to extend the, the boundaries of their territory and are fiercely aggressive to anyone that would uh, that would trespass on their lands. Um, so the I truce doesn't apply with these groups. Exactly. Exactly. They are not privy to that. Exactly. This is a separate clan of Varro. Um, this uh, they they have a comp a different mark. Uh, Glane, you were traveling uh, into the woods off to the uh, the west of Bulwark, looking for Tio, uh, and you took note. Uh, you drew it on yourself uh, in a in a bid for some kind of advantage. So you you very distinctly remember what that mark looks like, and this is not it. You know, as you're passing through this part of the uh, the old road, that that these markings here that we see on the trees, this is not the same Varro clan. And as you guys are proceeding through the the woods, um, uh, Serene takes note: these carvings are the 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 scratchings on the wood bark here. This is fairly fresh. Uh, Serene is very you know, very well acquainted with the uh, with trees and how they grow as an elf. Uh, and so she she very quickly catches on that, that this territory has been claimed recently. So we need to be on our guard. This may have been a safe road at one point, but the Varro have pushed in on this area. Uh, and so. Uh, as you were, uh, let's see here. Uh, what for? Uh, so, uh, you are going to have to, uh, enter into combat as, uh, as you hear, uh, a wolf-like growl, uh, coming from the, uh, from beyond the trees. Uh, you are not caught off guard. You, you were prepared for this, but the clues that you were able to find, uh, sort of prepared you for the possibility of an encounter, uh, a pair of Varro stalk out of the trees. They do not wait for... They do not wait for a reason. They do not wait for any discussion on your trespass. They immediately um, sort of uh, get down on all fours and begin rushing towards you. Teeth barred. Bared. I, I pull my mask down over my face. Uh that from under my hood and uh, hop up on one of the carts to try and um, to, to pull out my bow. All right. So you're going to need to uh, enter the fray. I fixed the buttons on my uh, little bot panel so I can click them easier. I don't have to search around as much. Uh, so you are facing off against your foe here. The foe, your foe is aware, but you're not really ambushed. So this is going to be a heart roll, which you did buff that up to two. So you're in luck there. All right. So Serene prepping for battle a weak hit. So you can either choose to take two momentum to bolster your position, or you can go ahead and prepare to act and take the initiative. Why aren't we rolling it as an ambush? Uh, mostly because you guys were already prepared and ready for combat. Fair enough. Well, she readies herself. Can I try to make a play at something? Absolutely. Uh, Serene, which uh, which advantage do you want in the fight? Uh, do you want the momentum or the initiative? Um, I'm sitting at a seven. That put me at a nine. Let's take initiative. All right. Uh, Blaine, are you gonna make your play before Serene acts? Yes, having them looking like they're getting ready only plays into what I'm trying to do. Ooh. Okay, so you, you know, so Glane, the rest of the uh, of the uh, the protectors of the caravan are uh, readying themselves for battle, drawing their weapons, stealing themselves against the oncoming foes. Uh, what do you do? The Torgans, you know, geared for war, pulling a sword out. Serene clearly has a shot lined up. 
Um, I'd like to take a step forward as they, I guess they're like probably running on all fours, like yeah. coming at us. I'd like to extend my arm and right in front of where they currently are, project a blast of light as a warning shot to make Ooh. them stop in their tracks. Okay, okay. And when when they stop, I'm going to just look at them and say the next one's going to hurt because I don't know what this is. Okay. So you're wanting to use your your light bearer ability that you have uh you have earned since late season 1. Uh okay. So I'm not actually trying to hit them, so it's right. a miss. It happens. Yes, like, yes. So I think this is going to be kind of a kind of a bluff of sorts. Uh so let's see. I feel like that might be a uh, a compel roll here. Uh, now this is gonna be gonna be tricky to pull off. Uh, you're gonna need a little bit of luck here, but still possible. I think. I think what we want to do here is you're gonna try and secure an advantage by using your light blast to advance your bluff. Um. Hopefully they've never seen something like this before. And yes. Animals are like, oh, oh, mm -hmm. we didn't know it was like that. Uh, now let's see here. Normally, what the light bearer ability allows you to do is deduct from your light track, which I believe is currently at four of six. Uh, yes. So it is a. Uh, normally, you would deduct from that. Uh, Choose and set the amount of light to unleash and roll plus light. So you would deduct four light and say, I'm rolling a plus four. Well, can I choose how much I want to use? Because I'd like to use one since I'm not actually going for damage. Yes, for yes. This is kind of be gonna this is gonna kind of be a special case situation. Uh let's see. So gathering light is wit a wit's roll. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to call it wits for your secure and advantage roll. Um, so you you do get a plus two on your secure and advantage attempt, and it's a strong hit. So you've got a choice here on how you want to benefit your bluff. Uh, you may take plus two momentum, bringing you up to nine, uh, or you can make your compel roll with an extra plus one on the raw roll itself. I think a nine would be really helpful. I think so. Going for the momentum? Yep. All right. And now we can make the compel roll, uh, which is going to be with Shadow, your specialty. You are a bluffer. Um, so Glane blasts uh, a bright light in front of him. Uh, now, the nature of this is not one of like, you know, seeing a small explosion of the dirt or anything, but more of a, a shining light that does sort of move through the air. Um, you can you can track it with your eyes, though it's, you know, difficult to focus on, uh, but it flies through. OK, weak hit. Mm. Uh, but Glane, Glane sends that light blast out and says, you know, Hey, this that was a warning shot. I won't miss next the next one. Uh a weak hit. They will do what you want, but they will ask something of you in return. Um Ooh. Alright, so you're asking them basically stand down, don't attack us. That's that's really what you what you're after here. Um, uh, I think what we're going to see here is the, Va the Varu exchange looks and then see the, the wealth of, of, uh, wagons and supplies behind you. Um, uh, they, they don't feel they, they're still like, I think we can take them. I'm pretty sure we can take them, but. I don't know. I've not seen something like that before. 
and this is this is all exchanged you know you, you can't hear any any words being spoken but they th something about the uh the expressions the smells they they are able to to know what's going on right now with each other's ideas and and they come to a conclusion together like all right you give us one of yours as an offering and you may pass through our woods. Or maybe two. One. One will do. I would like to uh, kind of prime another one. Kind of make my hand light up without actually doing it. Like like that's not going to be acceptable. All right, all right. Uh, like, do we have any like some of your... cattle or pigs or something with us? Probably, probably. It's like, can we give him a pig? <laughs> a what? I I can tell you where to find a boar. <laughs> it's like we'll just pay a toll. <laughs> um. Hmm. This seems possible. They they may not see much difference between you and the cattle, uh, as far as they're concerned about dinner. So, uh, hmm. Ooh. Let's, uh, let's ask the Oracle. We'll give it a D100. Uh, I feel like it is a fair chance that they'll take you on this offer. Uh, I'm gonna say... Uh, 26 and above, and they, they'll take the pig. Uh, 1 to 25, and that's, that's not what they're after. 84. Like, hmm. Yes, that one. The squealing one. I want that one. I separate it from the others. Hey, that'll do pig and I kind of tap it on the back to make it run over to the a noble sacrifice very good you may pass but be fast my friends may not offer the same deal Serene's I... gonna slide over to one of the one of our NPCs accompanying us mm -hmm. and tell them like get word back to the village now <laughs> let's take see one here. Of, take one of the horses go uh let's see here I wait until the caravan starts moving again and then I break contact with them and follow them along all right wait what are you doing like I'm, I'm kind of the last one to stop looking at Navarro. Like, gotcha, as gotcha. We all start to leave. I, I'm like making sure they go. <laughs> Just, you know, putting me between them and us, and then heading off with them. Uh, so let's see here. You are, uh, uh, you join back up with the rest of the caravan. Uh, so you guys did send one person back. Which does mean that sort of the the amount of labor, you know, workers coming along was not going to be quite as much as as expected. Um, but the message is important to let them know that hey, the uh, the roads are getting taken over. Granted, it's not a frequently traveled road, but it is a regularly traveled road. If that makes sense, it is a. I think we might have said about once a year that this trek is made to uh, to Ember? Yeah, I, th I thought we said twice a year, but... Maybe twice a year. Um, it's not... It's not a... It, it's a regular occurrence, but it's infrequent. Yeah, Serene I said... I was 15, oh, whatever. <laughs> Serene draw t uh, sends a piece of paper back with the... Uh, back with the writer of the symbol for this clan and says take this to the mayor 
Find the kid that talks to the Varro and let them know this is happening. Maybe they can work something out. Nice. I like it. It's in the best interest of everybody that the friendly Varro have that territory and not the enemy Varro that we don't have a truce with. Right. <laughs> so maybe we can bond over a mutual enemy. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, yeah. Not our problem right now. Right, right. right. It's it's out of your <laughs> it's out of scope right now, but you know, hopefully this helps. Yeah, setting that up for later. Yes, exactly. Um uh, Okay. Well, let's see if progress can be now made uh on getting to the first waypoint. Now there's been a little bit of a hiccup along the way. Um uh, Threats were avoided. Okay. Uh a weak hit on uh where it, well now I need to know where my um, uh, Undertaker Journey, there it is. Now it, it's changed from a, a list of just hit down the right number of times to a massive Where's Waldo of about 50 buttons. All right, on a weak hit, you do reach a waypoint, but suffer one supply. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. You lost a pig, perfect. It's a good thing I didn't count uh, count that separately, as I was leaning towards ever so slightly. Uh, all right, so you do reach a waypoint, and the oracle is going to tell us uh, what the nature of this place is. Uh, this is uh, location. Gosh, there's a lot of numbers. Uh, okay, forest. Perfect. And uh, shadowy. Shadowy forest. Um, so this is just on the other side of that encounter with the Varro. Uh, you reach a small sort of uh, uh, region within the forest that is more dense uh, than the others. It is... Uh, particularly nutritious soil. The trees have grown tall and thick here, uh, overshadowing the sky. Um, and although a little bit uh, intimidating at first sight, uh, this area where it becomes as night within the woods, uh, uh, Lucia explains that this area is uh, warded from dangers. Uh, she is, of course, a warder, as uh, we have mentioned. Uh, she explains that she and many who have gone before her um, have uh, have ritualistically uh, protected this area from threats, and this this sort of glen is a a safe place. Uh, and is the perfect place to set camp for the night uh, before continuing your journey. Uh, so if you'd like to roll make camp, you may. I have bonuses for that you with my do. story weaver. Mm -hmm. And I uh, imagine we're going to have to tell some stories to explain what happened with Glane earlier. I think so. How That said... Keep in mind, every role is dangerous in Ironsworn. There is always yeah. the chance that you are going to get a miss. And your bot just loves nines tonight. I know. That is, that is just part of the danger. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. Uh, if you do the story story weaver ability, it does not give you any advantage to the actual roll, but it increases the benefits taken. Yes. I don't think anyone has anything that will help with the uh, make camp 
Scott's uh, role. So what do you guys think? Making camp? All in favor? Yeah. Camp. 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 All right. Here we go. What? Dobbs, you need to give us back rolling, I think, at this point. Why? Like, you're not allowed to roll anymore. It doesn't Where seem like this? I should. Why? It doesn't... No, oh, I, 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 at first I was saying, did I do something wrong with like the random number generation? But no, it's it's rolling a lot of low numbers. It's just they happen to be on the left side. Uh, momentum can be expended here. I have a seven. By Glane. We didn't cite who was making the make camp roll. And it would be best if it wasn't you because you rolled a one. Well, I mean, well, I that doesn't. Five. <laughs> oh, the one's not applicable here. That's only it's if early. it's a if it's a edge roll. Okay. Yeah, that's a combat thing. Sure, okay. check your Twitter. You're the only person I can say this to. Glane, do you want to burn momentum to turn this into a weak hit? A nine to make it a weak hit? Basically, yeah. For make camp, it might not be worth it. Yeah, just whatever happens, happens. All right, we're going to pay the price on this. Uh, typically, we've done supplies in the past. Typically. Uh, let's see here. A new danger or foe is revealed. You see... It wouldn't be out of the question, especially based on these roles, if... Uh, the Varro return, somehow the ward fails. Uh, well, maybe it's been desecrated. By the Varu. Or anything else. Yeah. Who knows? The the nature of the ward is uncertain. <laughs> you guys aren't going to get out of this fight, I don't think. Question. Yes? About my powers. Yes. The Varu are not... They are not dark are dwelling, dark. no. But if it's night... Are they dark dwelling folks? <laughs> they are. They're in the dark. And they're dwelling. They're dwelling there or something. Okay, let's see. Light bearer. Specifically against a dark dwelling foe. Define dwelling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is, is there any chance we could just... The danger is we've happened upon sleeping ones and we need to sneak out. Mm, that totally makes sense. Uh, let's see. Is there anything? Well, the Varro are the Varro are warded from danger too if they're in the bubble. Technically, like, maybe, maybe, maybe this is just where they sleep. <laughs> maybe we need to make a roll to quietly escape. Let's see. So there's nothing. Well, okay. It does specify they do strike at night. That's one of their tactics. Oh, then they're just having their coffee now. It's just now getting dark. So, I mean, maybe they're sleeping in. You know what? I'll I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Light bearer will will work here. Uh So the Varro have found the warded safe space. They've decided that this is where they're going to sleep because it protects them too. And we're like, oh, um, well, we were going to use this, but maybe that's a bad plan. Yeah, I think somehow or another, you guys are setting up camp. Uh, a distant, a distant howl is heard as the moon begins to rise. 
Uh, Lucia is hesitantly reassures everyone uh, that the area is safe, but says that she must attend to check something. Um, she returns uh, hurrying back from the edge of the campsite, uh, exclaiming that uh, that we should make ready for an attack. Uh, something ha something is wrong here. And around you, you hear the uh, the familiar growls yet again. Though you can't place exactly where they're coming from within the trees. Just for context, did we get far enough in the making a camp to have any kind of campfire? Or are we just out of the woods? Uh, have we gotten benefits from that yet? <laughs> well, actually, I guess we No, you would no not. Role. Yeah, roll failed. Yeah. Uh, I just need to know if it's there for the purposes of the fight. Okay. Would you like there to be fire? I would. Then there is fire. I would like that for to be the first thing I did when we got there. <laughs> would would it make things more interesting? Then yes, absolutely. There's fire. Uh, okay. Um, fire. fire makes everything more interesting. That's really. true. Uh, now battle has not begun yet, so if you would like to secure advantage of some sort in advance, you may. Uh, but describe what what is it you're doing as you're as you're hearing these growls from the woods. I'm kind of looking around, seeing if I can pinpoint where it's coming from, but mm -hmm. it sounds like it's coming from everywhere. Um, the way that this light bearer thing works, it's the first time we've really done it. Yeah. My light track is currently at three. Four, if I roll... Uh... Oh, I see, because the trick. It's like, eh... Does that did that cost a light to use it for securing an advantage? I, I did it. <laughs> you did it. Rules as written, the only way to decrease your light track is to use it. Well, then maybe that was just a little, eh, you know, little yeah. glimmer since I didn't actually have a target. Basically, yeah. Like if I try to fill it at this point where it's four, like. Does it top off, or do I have to roll and I could get a worse light track? Um, let's see. On a strong hit, you set it to six. Uh, on a weak hit... Because I could roll to get more and lose one if I get a weak hit. Oh, that's tricky. Is it make it as in set it to three or add three? three? I'm actually not 100% sure on that. A um, miss would be gain none. A, a weak hit would be get three, and a strong hit would be power up. Right. Uh, well, let's let's say, at least temporarily, uh, that it will set it to three while I frantically Google something. Maybe as I get better at it, it shifts. Yeah, it, so it's going to work the bad way for now. So, yeah, at this point, I'm just going to try to get a beat on where it's coming from, but not do anything else. Right. OK. Um, Torgan or Serene, anything? I will get the highest point I can pull my mask down and uh ready up with all an right. arrow. mask is on uh, and you're already already have your arrow knocked uh torgan uh i'm already geared for war so i just i grab all my heavy stuff and my uh, shield and everything and i'm there all right so no specific advantages being secured here uh, I'm on high ground, but other than that. Do you want to roll that as an advantage? Or. <sighs> no, I think I need to save my momentum in case. That's true. 
You're bad things could happen. A jerk tonight. It is. I mean, it's bound to happen every once in a while, but still. Like it's consistently being a jerk tonight. Yeah. You may need to rebalance something. <laughs> I bet if I just averaged out all the rolls, it would it would look pretty normal. Unfortunately. It's getting it's rolling all these nines and tens. Those are high rolls. That's what we want, right? Uh, OK, well, uh, who wants to describe their uh, their first sighting of the Varro? Question. So how close are we to the Ashen Lands? Uh, still a few days travel away. Uh, okay, so, Lucia so has explained that uh, the terrain, there's a sort of uh sort of rocky desert uh that you'll have to traverse before you actually enter the ashen lands proper okay so the territory of this group probably doesn't extend to the actual ashen lands no just perhaps the the woods around okay because I, I i'm curious as to if any of these um this 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 beast any of these beastmen tribes clue into the fact that I'm an elf and if that changes anything because mm. elves are pretty rare you don't yeah, see them yeah. very often no you don't and I smell different than all these humans and mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going to change anything I'm kind of curious about that yeah I smell slightly of horse yeah yeah weird you smell we all like a couple of us smell magic Goalish, and I don't know if that's going to change how they react to us or not. Yeah. Because you could make a strong case for the fact that it might. We don't even know that the Varu actually smell magic any different. Like it may be a colorblind kind of thing, and they just. They're completely they unaware of that. But they will think, smell different species. I think I've got a way to spot one. Okay. I'm, I'm sticking pretty close to the fire, um, kind of next to it. Um, and I'd I'd like to think that as we're looking out for them, it's looking at us. And when it looks at me, its eyes catch. I see like a little like when a cat looks at you, and those little right like okay light up. And when I see one of those, I just try to shoot a light blast right up at it. And if I miss, at least it should illuminate the area so that we can get real eyes on them. I like it, but I'm trying to hit it directly. Yeah, I think that'll work. And this is a full effort bar using light blast. Then I think I think you are striking without warning and will roll shadow for enter the fray. Because uh, they are not expecting, first of all, for anyone to see them. Second of all, they don't see anyone aiming at them. Especially if you're... Uh, four or two different ones. You do not know. Uh, not to be that guy, but they all look the same to us. Uh, we hit on Enter the Fray, so you can choose to either take momentum or initiative. If you're wanting to get this attack off, you're probably wanting the initiative. I'm also really close to top off anyway, so yeah, let's take that initiative. All right. Lane has initiative, and you're gonna you're gonna go straight for that light bearer attack here. So this is a new ability that we've not used before. Um, that kind of came as a result of that contact with the mana spring uh, at the end of season one. Uh, you may use your light to strike or clash against a dark dwelling foe. Choose the amount of light to unleash. We're going for all four of what you've got. Um. Uh, and roll plus light instead of plus iron or plus edge. So you're actually going to be, because you're spending four, you're getting a plus four on your attack, but it's not in addition to the normal, like, plus two or plus three. Um, and then you lose whatever light you spent, and if you manage to hit, you do one plus that amount of light. For comparison, um, a normal weak hit on a strike does two damage. And this would do five if it hits. Uh, I'm using shadow to strike out at them. Since it's an unexpected attack. Uh, that was for enter the fray. And that was okay. a weak hit. Uh, and now you're rolling plus light. You're not using edge, shadow, wits, anything like that. You're using the, just the four that you're spending. My bad abilities. I'm using this. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I mean, this is going to be a higher roll than anything you would normally use. Right, right. I'm saying I'm not using my bad ability. Either. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Okay, a weak hit. Uh, so, choose the amount of light to unleash. On a hit, your harm is five. So that is a hit, and it just counts as a regular strike. Oh, so on a strong hit, you could do an extra one damage. So that was five damage and lose initiative. Uh, so here's the thing about five damage. Uh, is that on a foe that is ranked as dangerous, uh, that is a full track. Oh. Uh, you just one-shot one. Well, not quite. Basically. Because I you want to burn my momentum to make it a throwing hit. Exactly. You can't, in, you can't remove that, uh, that energy from the fight without a strong hit. I would... I would be very surprised if Avaro has ever seen anyone do this before. So if I can one-shot this thing, the other one might be like, oh. Do you oh, want to god. Apostrophe <laughs> S, <believe>. how many? <laughs> so let's let's go for it. Alright, burning momentum to turn that into a strong hit, allowing you uh, Don't I have a when I use momentum to Oh burn? as a matter of fact, I believe you do. Uh, as a veteran. Uh, let's see here. Uh, when you burn momentum to improve your result in combat, envision how your hard-won fighting experience gives you the upper hand. So go ahead and envision that. All right. I'm, okay. All right. Yeah. I'm All just right. kind of maximizing, you know, the bluff I had earlier and just blowing that up to the nth degree, like... Yeah. I can intimidate them from not even wanting to fight. <laughs> this is, this yeah. is really going to show them. So the advantage of doing that is you take plus one momentum after you reset, bringing you up to three, and you add a plus one when you make your next move. Uh, on top of that, once per fight, uh, you can take initiative. When Oh, wait, that's only when you're improving a miss to a weak hit. Okay, well, you still get a plus one on your next move, uh, which doesn't really apply here because in the fight is a progress move, so you don't get any bonuses. So uh, as long as the dice don't do that thing they've been doing all night, we'll be fine. They have been doing that thing. Here we go. Oh, cool. Very so cool. Now we get the one in the two. <laughs> Seriously. Great. But, uh, all right, so... Uh, Glane sort of watching, watching through the, the, uh, the fire spots that, that just glint of light in the woods and he tracks it with his eyes for some time before finally deciding to kind of try this out a little bit more. He's, he's been experimenting with this ability, kind of working it as one would a muscle. Uh, learning how to use this new, this newfound power that the Mana Spring has bestowed upon him for some reason. Uh, and so focusing his concentration on the light in front of him and the light that somehow is within him, uh, he holds out his hand and this bead of bright white light fires across the field um, and just explodes into this brilliant uh, ball of of luminescence uh, within the woods. And for a moment, the it is like a lightning strike has has lit up the sky uh, for just a brief moment. It is it is daytime in this small area of the woods. And the one thing that is just just it's tough to tell if you're just imagining it from the after image, but you're fairly certain you see this wolf-like body just flying into the air, tumbling before crashing down, uh, motionless on the ground. What do you want to do next, Glain? Um, in that, in that moment where everything lit up, I see the other one, and I just hand my arm over to it and just stare at it. 
Uh, so that is that is quite a bluff. Um, so we're gonna see. During that flash of light, did I get enough? Did I did I manage to pick a target? Perhaps are there? Yeah, a I'd count of targets. I'd say so. Um, uh, you you can see one other in the woods around you. Um, now the question is whether there are more. Right now, none other than you see. Now, if there is a terrible miss and a match kind of situation, there could be more that may have already always been there, but you just didn't see him at first. Uh, what but for now, drawn them here. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, but for now, there's just the one sitting there that you can see. Uh, it was quite a distance from the other. Uh, Serene's quick elven eyes scan the entire area and find that uh, the other wolf is almost on the complete opposite side. It seems they were doing some kind of slow circling with their howls to make it difficult to pinpoint where they were. But that flanking maneuver has sort of uh, was working to their advantage, but the cover is blown. But you've got a clear line of sight. So it, it just heard the fatal yelp of its companion. Yes. So it. Uh... So I'm going to go ahead and loose an arrow at it. Makes uh, sense. Let's uh, let's just encourage him to leave. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, he. he, he... We have we have established mm -hmm. uh, a precedent at this point, and let's mm -hmm. just uh, in encourage and make sure that message lands home. Right, right. Uh, if we can get him to run away. He might communicate that humans are sometimes very dangerous. <laughs> he shouldn't be trifled with. At least these ones. Mm -hmm. So, with your mask on, you have effectively an edge of three. Uh, are you going to be aiming at all here? I get a bonus to that with my archer ability. Yes. Uh, remind me what? Remind me how that works. It's been a while. Uh, let's see here. With the archer ability, uh, can we pull that up on the screen? Uh, there it is. Uh, with the archer ability, when you secure an advantage by taking a moment to aim, you get a plus one on the secure an advantage, which secure an advantage mostly spits out more momentum or it could spit out a plus one on your actual next roll if you get a strong hit. Uh, but this particular secure an advantage made with the archer talent uh, grants you even more momentum uh, based on whether it was a, a hit or not. Yeah, let's do secure an advantage um and we're gonna do um edge so i get momentum on a hit instead of it needing to be a strong hit clever well well thought out uh in that case you're gonna be rolling edge which is three an additional plus one uh because of your archer talents first sentence there so you're gonna be making this roll with a four this is just for secure an advantage here that is a strong hit uh, against a nine, I will add. Uh, yeah. Uh, so because it was a hit, your archer talent grants you one momentum. And because it was secure an advantage strong hit, you may choose to either take two momentum or take a plus one on your actual strike. I'm already at eight. Let's take a plus one on the strike. All right. In that case, uh, for a strike, you're going to be rolling edge, which is a three. And with that secure an advantage, it is now a four, which we love to see fours. Mm -hmm. All right. Here comes the strike. And it is uh, a weak hit. This is still good. Fine. You That's still fine. managed to inflict your harm, uh, but you do lose initiative. Uh, well, hopefully he's going to be running, so that shouldn't matter. Yeah, that's our that's our hope here. Uh, so this is going to be uh, two harm for a weak hit uh, and initiative lost. Um, now let's see here. Now, Glane, were you going to try and and psych this guy out 
and hopefully scare him off. Um, as I hold my hand in his direction, because I think it's the only thing keeping him from jumping out of the tree at me, I would like to kind of gaze down at the campfire and take a moment, because um, I'm empty. Yes, <laughs> I mean he doesn't know that. If I can, yeah, I'm thinking if I can just take in a, a bit of light. I know that. Uh, let's see. How long does it? How long does it take you to capture the essence of light? Like, is this a? Uh, is this something that you have to kind of spend a few minutes doing, typically, or is this something you can do, kind of spur of the moment? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd say maybe if it's like a strong hit, it, it comes pretty naturally. But if it's a weak hit, maybe, you know, thankfully, Serene is volleying arrows at it. So it's not immediately I'm, focused yeah, on I'm, me. I'm right. buying yeah. Blaine some time. There you go. All right. So we'll try that. So that's going to be a roll with Wits, uh, which Blaine has a two on Wits. So let's see what happens here. Uh, ooh, weak hit. All right. So... Uh, your track does reset to three. Which is something. It's only one less than I one shot at that guy with. Exactly, exactly. Oh. So there's there's that. I would like to point out the irony that we took away Shadow Walking because it was overpowered, and now I have a Kamehameha wave I can use at night. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to kind of nail down the recharge a little bit to make it. Maybe this is something you just don't, you know. Hey, I see some starlight. Well, I'm I'm right next to this fire, and it's a it's a light source. That's all I need. That's true. All right. Well, you've captured that fire's essence now. I mean, light is not you know. There's not fluorescent lighting and electricity in this world, so light is actually going to be a little. A campfire is really the best thing I can ask for. Right. Your battery. Yeah. But other sources of light will be like a torch. Like, that's very small. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. Um, we can you do set your track to three. Uh, and I think we just said that on a weak hit, it's it takes some time to do. Yeah. So once I kind of feel that work and I just kind of stay fixed on it, because I'm hoping not to have to use it. I'm hoping that between getting shot and being aimed at by whatever this is, we can yeah. wrap this up. Glane is totally respecking into wizard, basically. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I cast magic missile at the darkness. <laughs> at the darkness. What was I just like saying about how magic in the Iron Sworn uh, uh, setting is not not big flashy fireball, but more slow rituals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to absorb this fire and hurl it at my enemies. Beam cannon. <laughs> Hyper beam. Uh, all right. So Torgan is here too. <laughs> yeah, Turtle's been sitting out a little bit this round. A little bit. How's it feel? Oh, next well, time it'll be my. <laughs> I've, I've actually been I've been defending the caravan this whole time. This um, is true. Maybe uh, this would be a time for me to maybe maybe shout into the darkness, you know, maybe in my convincing way that this uh, this you may be outnumbered. You know what? That's fair. I'm going to make a compel That's, attempt here. That seems like me. Yeah. Uh. That's so that's that's convincing. So that's a heart roll. It does sound a bit like a threat. That's true. Mixed with mercy. Mixed you don't want to die here. Well, you know, it's iron, so... Your iron, iron is still good. That's fine. Yeah. Actually, that was probably the best move possible, getting that iron to three for Torgan. He is he is the, the fighter of the group. He is our Flintstones vitamin. Uh, weak hit. Hmm... Uh, we'll give you another pig. 
We're not giving him a pig. We will let him take the body of his dead friend. Ooh. Because we're nice. You can eat that. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, all right. So he definitely, he definitely does not want to stand down. Uh, he will. Yeah, if he gets what he wants. I mean, basically, he wants you all to leave this area. This is their territory. I so, also want to leave. <laughs> well, perfect. Like we're on our way out. We we that that is our goal. I mean, Look, you guys haven't I mean, really the, set down for camp here. Well, that's what I was thinking. Maybe we did set down a little bit of stuff, and we're going to suffer a supply because we have to leave so quickly. Yeah, maybe maybe you can push on. Or maybe we just take out this one because we already have him over half and or like right at half. <laughs> no like, mercy from the elf. Like, like we tried. We gave you a pig. We bribed you to leave and you didn't learn your lesson. So now now it's time you, you're, you're getting many, made an example of. Right. My hand is starting to light up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what's it going to be? Are you guys going to leave or see it through to the bloody end. It's like, why don't you take your friend, your dead friend, and, and, and leave? And go back to your people. Don't think I will. No. I didn't no. think he was going to. No. He's 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 coming out. He's coming out of the woods. Uh, he's going for Torgan, too. Great. Uh, Torgan... Uh, do you want the initiative or the momentum? Uh, probably uh, initiative, so I don't, so I can get a first attack. All right, so this 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 guy is barreling down towards you. Uh, he's he's coming full speed on all fours, uh, face full of rage, uh. Teeth sharp, uh, just slobbering out of his mouth. Just, uh, uh, and he's he's coming straight for you. You have your to aid Torgan. Yes, you may aid Torgan. I've had enough right. time to put another to knock another arrow as well. Torgan, still, you don't get to fight. I'm I'm still powering up. I'm not quite ready. Right. Is this, it, I didn't realize how much that takes out of me, because that's the first time I've done it. Right. And I'm at three health, so I'm not even my best. Yeah. But I I know he's watching. So as as the Varro goes on you know towards Torgan, mm -hmm. I just scream out, George, now <laughs> because he's gonna let loose one of his slings. Okay. Uh so this is gonna be kind of a secure an advantage here then. Um uh, let's call that uh that's, a, that's like a teamwork roll, right? It's probably teamwork. He did it before, and I told him to stay back unless I said something. So this is a callback. Exactly. Love it. You, you, you gave him permission this time. Yeah, he's got it. All right. Uh, I mean, you guys, you know, you kind of gel a little bit. Uh, we can't. Uh, and you're doing this as aid another, which means Torgan gets the benefit. So Torgan, you get plus one momentum as uh, George lets fly uh, with his trusty sling, aiming shots at the the uh, the uh, charging Varro. Uh, the shots do not connect, uh, but they distract, which helps. Uh, you can see the Varu's eyes kind of darting to assess these incoming threats. And that gives you a little bit of an opening here uh, to make he your move. Exactly. Oh, man. I'm I'm going to, as it's running full speed and it's not really paying attention to where it's going, I'm going to do something brutal. And I'm just going to stick my sword straight forward and try to impale it right in the Ooh. mouth. Uh, well, not quite. But it was a good attempt there. Uh, but you do make nine. <laughs> Come on. I know it's just not quite there. Uh, it's not quite enough. Uh, 
Torgan, you attempt to skewer this thing straight through. Uh, the Varu, the Varu uh, does spot your your play uh, and is quick to make a sort of leaping strike towards you. Uh, let's see, and you do lose initiative. Uh, uh, he he is injured during the leap as you kind of twist your sword upward to try and deflect before he can manage to pounce uh, or bite. Uh, you you manage to deflect him. Uh, he is uh, he topples down onto the ground behind you, but is quick to scramble back to his feet before rushing again. Uh, I put an arrow in him while he's on the ground. All right. Uh, well, you don't have initiative. I don't. But... You don't. So this is going to be a clash move, uh, which... Torgan, you're going to need to make this one. Um, your foe has the initiative and is coming straight for you. Uh, you've still got your shield at the ready, but he's on the opposite side from where you were kind of had your weight prepared. Uh, and so... Mm, miss. Uh, no harm inflicted on the foe. Uh... You try and deflect with your shield, uh, but he managed to kind of get around and get sink his teeth right into your arm. Uh, the pressure that he, the jaws are able to exert on you is far beyond what you would have expected. Uh, as you can you can feel them sinking into the flesh. You can feel the the warmth, the wetness. Uh, as the jaws clench down and begin starting to try and just tear and rend. Uh, you are going to need to uh, endure harm uh, facing this damage. This is this is a dangerous foe, which means it deals it deals two damage to your health track. Uh, so you're going to be rolling a three here. Uh, to determine what happens with that health. Ooh, weak hit. I mean, a miss, uh, which means you suffer one momentum. That's not too bad, honestly. Considering, you know, that you still had health, you're in great shape. But, uh, Serene, uh, you see that uh, this thing has its jaws on Torgan's shield arm. Uh, Torgan is caught off guard and is you know, is unable to kind of get a clean strike in with his sword while wrestling with this thing. Uh, you wanted to fire an arrow, uh, if I remember right. Well, I am above Torgan. Torgan is below me. Okay. So at this point, it's pretty much a point-blank shot straight down into the back of this thing's skull while it's got its head in Torgan's arm, isn't it? Hmm. I think in the, uh, in the... Uh, the chaos of the battle, the exact location has, has shifted a bit. It's not going to be a, a straight shot. There's a, there's a little bit of difficulty here. The, the spinning, the turning, um, you're having difficulty lining this up. It's not the the guaranteed hit you were hoping for. Where, did, where, where does Torgan end and Navarro begin? Exactly. His arm is in his mouth. So if you hit him in the head. Yeah, this, this, he's dancing with wolves here. I just realized I was muted. I've been talking. Oh, whoops. Well, you you Sorry. had a wolf on you, so I did. this is expected. I did, I did not enjoy. All right, let's try and put an arrow in its hindquarters. We want to put we want to draw its attention. All right. Uh, so you're going to need to be making a this is technically a clash roll. Uh, the description range, doesn't though. What's that? Doesn't range, doesn't range automatically make it the other one? Uh, no. Uh, strike is when you have initiative. Clash is when you don't have the initiative. The extra flavor text about approaching foe and volley and all that isn't really as yeah, much. I thought, that, I thought there was something that affected it based on whether you were in melee or at range, but maybe I'm remembering something. Uh, melee exactly. or range changes whether it's iron or edge. So if you're doing a melee attack, it will be with iron. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Never. Never. No, no. <laughs> okay, so it will be an edge attack here. 
Uh, which, I am masked, so... So you'll get your plus three. three on this clash attempt. All also right. Also clock check. Yes. All right, let's end it. End it. Ended right there. Strong hit. Uh... A normal hit will be enough to bring this up to max. So you you just you're gonna even the plus one momentum whether you like it or not. Would you like to end <laughs> the fight? Yes. All right. Well. Uh, on the screen. Success. Yay. It is done. Uh, the night falls silent. Uh, you catch uh, you catch a glimpse of of Griff who was uh approaching the fray with his staff out, who is simultaneously relieved and yet a bit annoyed. Uh, George pumping his fist into the air. Ah, that's the way you do it! Uh, and Torgan frantically trying to unhinge the, uh, the dead wolf creature's jaws uh, from his mouth. Uh, and quickly goes off to find something to bandage the wound. Serene's in a little bit of a sour mood. So she proposes something that's almost Glane-esque. Uh-oh. You're going to take its skin, aren't you? No, we're not going to skin it. But I am going to suggest that um, you know, we... Uh, the road is supposed to be safe, and we need this road to be safe. Mm-hmm. I just suggest, very matter-of-factly, that um, you know we uh, we take our downed foes, and you know, we're making an example of them, and we just just leave a note. The road needs to be safe. Like the road, like they can have the forest, but the road itself needs to be safe for passage. I I assure Serene. Go ahead and help pack up camp, and I'll take care of this. And I, I leave the two Varro leaned up against a tree with their blood smeared into the scratched icon that they have made. Yeah, we leave the dirty work to Glade. This is this is what we think of your tree. Oh, I'm I'm down with going like complete Vlad the Vlad the Impaler here. Wow. The darker I, side of Serene. Serene's in a bad mood. She hasn't been sleeping well, mm. um, and I have some story stuff that I'll share with that next Ooh. time. Uh, I've, I've been doing some thinking about how to in incorporate some of her backstory. So she's just very, very annoyed with these delays and is in a hurry to find the next mana spring. Uh, very urgently, in fact. Ooh. So she... Uh, she she is very very uh, annoyed with this what she considers uh, delay and is just like no like no like you insignificant little jerks need to you know know your place I've got more important things I need to be doing and you are in the way all right not to play anybody off but that oh. pairs so nicely with the soundtrack that's going on right now that you can't hear <laughs> uh alright well with that uh <laughs> travelers prepare to set up camp for real and uh also set up shifts to uh to watch during the night it's a lot of snail emotes floating around these days uh, next time on Dobbs Quest, we will continue the journey to Ember, the settlement within the Ashen Lands, in search of the Mana Spring. What dangers await? What mysteries will be unfolded before us? Tune in and find out. Uh, any parting words? Stay tuned for next time. Yoguba. Yoguba. Oh, I've got something. Oh. Oh, never mind. Oh. Someone redeemed the last $5. Ah, take that.
but also, yeah. We, we did. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it, everyone. Thank you for watching. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs>